This is the fifth and final section of the vectors chapter solving geometrical problems. Um, and this basically brings together all the different things uh, that we've learned um, about um, uh, vectors and a cross product and a scalar triple product um, and use those to help us solve uh, problems. So I'm just going to pause it and just put uh, a list of all the things that we've learned so far. Right, so you can see lots of stuff here to do with the cross product, equation of a straight line, finding areas and finding volumes. Uh, one thing we might find particularly useful is that when we find a cross product of two vectors, it gives you a vector which is perpendicular to both. And so this is useful for like finding normals, finding those bits of the equations that we need to find the equation of a line or a plane. So the cross product of A and B gives you a vector which is perpendicular to A and B. Okay, finding the form R dot N equals P. And you'll know from core one that the way that we find P is A dot N, a point in the plane. Uh, and you do the dot product of that and a normal to the plane, which contains uh, a line L and we're given the equation of the line here and also uh, this point is in the plane as well. Now to define a single plane, and I'll attempt to draw a plane here, one direction vector in that plane is not enough. Okay, so one direction vector here, for example, we can get from, from this, yeah? We need another one, we need another non-parallel um, vector in that plane. And then what we want is, we want a normal to that plane and the normal to that plane is going to be, has to be perpendicular to both of these non-parallel vectors, right? So a, a vector in the plane is, well we can just take the direction vector of the line which is negative 1 to negative 1 and we want another um, vector in the plane and another vector in the plane so to find this other vector in the plane, I'm going to use um, this point. Oops. I'm going to use this point that's in the plane and this point that's in the plane. Yeah, they're both in the plane. So I can use both of those. So if, um, let's write this out fully, is, so let's do, the second point, 4, 3, 1, minus the first, it doesn't matter, any uh, vector parallel to this will do, so 3, 5, minus 2, so this will give me um, a vector in the plane, which will be 1, 3 minus 5 minus 2, 1 minus minus 2, 3, okay, so I now have two vectors in the plane. So let's highlight those. So this and this, two vectors in the plane. So they represent basically like my two purple lines. So now what I want is a vector which is perpendicular to both of those. That will be the normal. That will be my n in my uh, equation of the plane. So I'll write this down. We now want a vector perpendicular to one negative one two negative one and one minus two three so we can do that by doing the cross product of these two and we'll use the determinant method to do that. 
So negative one, two, negative one, one, negative two, three. So what will that give us? That will give us i times by two minus one minus two three minus j times by minus one minus one one three plus k times by minus one two one minus two. So if we work this out, see what vector this gives us. So we're going to get six um, minus uh, two. So six minus two, so that gives us four i. Then here we'll get minus three, minus minus one. So minus three plus one is minus two. And um, then we've got minus here. So minus two becomes plus two. So plus two j. And then the last one will have two minus two. So that's zero. So no k part. So uh, this here represents our vector n, our normal. So now we can just put it into the equation of plane. So r dot n, which is going to be 4 to 0, equals a dot n, which can be any point it passes through. So I can use a as 3, 5, minus 2, or 4, 3, 1. OK, I'm going to use this one because the book uses this. So we're going to use this to show that we still get the same answer. So we'll use point A, a point that it passes through as 3, 5, minus 2, dot N. So that's 4, 2, 0. So that will give us R dot 420, or you can use it as ijk, you can write ijk, and then we will get um, 12 plus 10 is 22, um, so yeah, just 22. So there we go. So this is our equation of the plane in that form, and we use the cross product to get that normal vector. Now part B, if we're going to write the equation of the plane in Cartesian form, what we do is replace R with x, y, z. So x, y, z dot 4, 2, 0 equals 22. So that will give us 4x plus 2y plus zero z, we don't need to zero z, equals 22. So yeah, four um, x plus two y equals 22. And I suppose we could divide everything by two here, even put all the numbers on one side. So we could have two x plus y minus 11 equals zero. So there are different ways in which we could write the equation of that plane. So there we go. Using that cross product to help us out. Okay, so we want to find the Cartesian equation of a plane that passes through these three points here. So we need to find two non-parallel ve vectors in the plane, so we can use these three points to do it. So let's say, for example, work out the vector that goes from A to B. So you'll work out the jump from A to B. So the jump between each one of these numbers here, that's the quick way of doing it. So first number goes up by one, the second number goes up by one, and the third number goes up by one. Yeah, they're all increased by one. Now I could use the vector BC if I wanted, or the vector AC. Now I'm going to use the vector BC. I need to check that it's non-parallel because they use um, AC in the book. 
right so to jump from b to c so the first number doesn't go up 2 stays as 2 the second number jumps from 1 to 16 so it's a 15 jump and the last number goes from 0 to 6 that goes up by 6 okay so I can see that they're non-parallel um, I want to find the normal to the plane which means I need to do the cross product of these two vectors so that will be i, j, k and then the numbers 1, 1, 1, 0, 15, 6 so that will be i times by 1, 1, 15, 6 minus j 1, 1, 0, 6 plus k 1, 1, 0, 15 Right, let's see what we get from all of that lot then. Right, so I will have from here 6 minus 15, which is going to be minus 9, so minus 9i. I think that's right, 6 minus 15. Then uh, I'll end up with 6 here minus nothing, so minus 6j. And then here I will end up with 15 minus nothing, so 15k. So plus 15k. So this is my normal vector. So let's put it into uh, this. And then we can change that to Cartesian form. So r dot n. So that's minus 9, minus 6, 15, equals a dot n. So I can pick any point that it passes through. Let me pick uh, the very first one here, because the numbers are nice and easy, 1, 0, minus 1. But I could easily have picked b or c, it doesn't matter. So 1, 0, minus 1 dot n so that's going to be minus 9 minus 6 15 so what does that give us r dot minus 9 minus 6 15 equals so we'll have um, 1 times minus 9 0 times by minus 6 and then 1 time negative 1 times by 15 so in vector form we're going to have r dot that equals uh, negative 24 so now all we do is replace r with x y z and then we can get it in cartesian form so x y z dot minus 9 minus 6 15 equals minus 24 so let's see what that gives us so minus 9 x minus 6 y uh, plus 15 z equals negative 24 so we can simplify this if we divide everything by minus 3 let's get rid of those nasty minuses then we will end up with 3x um, plus 2y minus 5z equals 8. So this is an equation of the plane. Yeah, Lots of different ways of doing it. We will end up with equivalent answers at the end. Okay, so we need to find the line of intersection between these two planes, pi 1 and pi 2, and we're given the equations of these two planes. Okay, so if we want to find the line of intersection, the line of intersection is going to be in this form. So we need to find a point that the line passes through, that's A, and we need to find the direction of the line. So let's start with a point that it passes through. So we're going to, let's label this point, 
the line of intersection passes through right so we are going to uh, write the equations of the lines in Cartesian form to find this point of intersection so first line is this so 2 minus 2 minus 1 equals 2 so that will give us uh, 2x minus 2y minus z equals 2 and then for the second plane I think I said line before I meant plane. We'll write this in Cartesian form. 1 minus 3, 1 equals 5. And that will give us x minus 3y plus z equals 5. So what we're going to do is now solve these simultaneously. Now we've got three unknowns, two equations. So it means we need to set one of the variables um, to 0. Okay, and we can set any one we like to zero. In a book, they set z to zero. So let's set x equal to zero and see what we get. So if I set x equal to zero, the first equation becomes minus 2y minus z equals 2. Or I could write that as um, 2y plus z equals minus 2. If I do the same with the second one, and I set x equal to 0, then I will have minus 3y plus z equals 5. Or I could say 3y minus z equals minus 5. Anyway, whichever way I do it, I'm now going to solve this and this simultaneously. Solve simultaneously. Now to solve these on the calculator, you are allowed to do that. So I set x equal to zero, and that gave me y equal to minus seven fifths. Maybe setting z equal to zero gives you nicer values. And z equals to four fifths. Okay, so this is a point that the line passes through. We've only got half the answer, so we've worked out what A is. So I'll draw a big line to show you that we've worked out what that is. What we need to work out now is the direction of the line. What is the direction vector of the line? We're going to use this little bit of information here that's going to be quite useful, that the direction of the line, direction of the the line of intersection of intersection is perpendicular to both the normals of the plane. Right, so this is where we use the cross, cross products. This is really important. If we didn't know this, we wouldn't be able to find a direction vector. The direction vector of the line of intersection is perpendicular to the normals of the planes. So that is what we're going to do now, is to work out this direction vector. by doing the cross product of the normals of the planes. Now the normals of the planes are these here. These numbers I'm just about to highlight, r dot n equals a dot n. So using the normals, what we're gonna have is this i, j, k, two minus two minus one, one minus three, one. So that's i, and then minus 2, minus 1, minus 3, 1, minus j, and that's going to be 2 minus 1, 1, 1, plus
plus k and that's going to be 2 minus 2 1 minus 3 okay so what do we get from this so minus 2 um, minus 3 so minus 2 from here and this will give us plus 3 so minus 2 minus 3 is going to be minus 5i moving on to the next one this is going to be 2 plus 1 so that's 3 and then the minus there so minus 3j and then the last one is going to be minus 6 plus 2 and minus minus 2 so minus 6 plus 2 is minus 4 so minus 4k so this is going to be the direction of our line so we can write the equation of the line now as r equals now we've got a point that it passes through that was the 0 minus 7 not sure why I put equals there oh yeah I, I do know why I put equals minus 7 over 5 4 over 5 um, plus lambda and its direction is minus 5 minus 3 minus 4 now there are lots of different equivalent answers that you could have so uh, for example I may have a completely different point that it passes through because maybe I've set uh, y equal to 0 or I've set z equal to 0 so this could be different and if we just multiply that all by minus 1 then we get 5 3 4 so it can be remember it can be any any parallel vector so this is an answer this is an equation there are plenty of others if you set y equal to 0 z equal 0 you get a different point that it passes through and multiply your direction vector by minus 1 and you get a slightly different vector there so we want to show that the shortest distance between two uh, skew lines so these are two non-parallel lines uh, with these as the equations of those two lines is given by that expression at the end which is in the formula booklet okay so let's draw a couple of lines there's a few things we're going to have to go through and you're going to have to try and visualize this being uh, three dimensions and it's, it's sort of difficult to sort of do so we've got two lines here let's call this one l1 and this one l2 so here's l1 here's l2 and the shortest distance between them is going to be a line like this which is perpendicular to both lines so imagine like l1 line is sort of coming towards you and the l2 line is going away it's difficult to imagine but um, that will be the shortest distance there okay so shortest distance needs to be perpendicular to both of those lines now we've got the equations of those lines so the one at the top is going to be r equals a plus lambda b and the one at the bottom is going to be r equals c plus mu d okay um, again we're going to have to try and visualize things in in 3d i'm going to use the same sort of letters they use in the book and i'm going to have a point on each of the lines and the point up here is going to be point p which is on that line l1 and this point q which is on line l2 and again we need to sort of imagine that there's um and we're going to find a vector that runs between those two lines now actually if we form this into a right angle triangle again it's going to need a bit of imagination if i form this into a right angle triangle okay like this so actually this is a right angle here then 
this distance here is the same as the shortest distance so same as shortest distance that blue line that I've got at the other end I'm going to try and um, pause this and tidy up that triangle a bit see if I can make it look a bit better so I have moved one or two things around a bit and it's going to take a little bit of imagination to try and work out or imagine this in 3D. So we've got the shortest distance here. We've got a, a point on each of the lines, P and Q. So they're just general points on each of the lines. And if we form that into a right angle triangle, then what we're gonna have here, this length is going to be the same length as the shortest distance. Okay, so we've got it set up now, ready to go. Now the first thing is that a point which is gonna be perpendicular to L1 and L2, the cross products of the directions of the lines will give us that. Okay, so um, the shortest distance from L1 to L2 is going to be is um, a vector or the the distance of that vector um, which is perpendicular to L1 and L2 okay so that's going to be the direction vectors of the lines and those direction vectors are B and D so that's going to be B cross D. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that by the length of that vector and make its length equal to 1 because we're going to want to multiply by 1 um, later on. So what we have here is um, basically the this, this shortest distance vector which we've made its distance equal to 1. Okay, so I'll just put here length equals one for this because we're going to use it later on okay so that's the first bit done right now we want to have a look at this right angle triangle that i've drawn in red and we're going to work out the length of its hypotenuse or we're going to work out the vector of the hypotenuse which is the vector qp or the vector for the hypotenuse and that's going to be op uh, minus oq now each one of these is going to be a general point on the line because we don't have actual um, values for those. So OP, well that's a general point on the line L1, which is going to be A plus lambda B minus a general point on um, OQ or L2, which is going to be C plus mu D. Okay, so if we work that out, what we'll get is A minus C plus lambda B minus mu D. So this basically represents like the hypotenuse of that red right angle triangle that I've drawn. Now let me add another letter here. Let's call this bottom here R. Okay, well PR or RP, let's call it PR, basically the length of PR um, is going to be hypotenuse cos theta. We're just using a bit of trigonometry here. So the hypotenuse is this, times by cos theta. Now remember earlier on, I worked out this uh, vector here and I said its length was one. So with this expression that I've just written down, if I multiply it by one, I basically haven't changed it. So what I'm going to have now is the same as what I had before. So lambda B minus mu D 
now times by this vector that I generated before, I'm times it by one, so I'm not changing it, cos theta. Okay, now what I've got here is the dot product. All of this, if we go back to the definition of the, the dot product, a dot b is equal to the length of a times the length of b times pi cos theta. Okay, so we, we've got that, so we can rewrite it as a dot product. So we can write it as a minus c plus lambda b minus mu d dot this. Okay. Now we can distribute it basically like expanding the brackets. So we'll have a c dot this uh, and then plus and we're going to have lambda b dot this okay so using the distributive law distributing it like expanding brackets and then minus mu d dot this so hopefully you're following it now remember where we have a, a scalar triple product and the letter appears twice its value appears zero which is what we've got here yeah so here's a scalar triple product here's a scalar triple product the first one's got b twice the second one's got d twice their value is zero so effectively we can say bye bye we don't need you anymore and um, that's going to leave us with just the first part and since we want to ensure that the uh, distance is positive so you always want a positive uh, distance then we just stick a modulus sign around the whole thing and we've proved the result as required so ac dot b cross d over b cross d okay that proves it as required okay so what we want to do here is find the shortest distance between two skew lines so we've got the skew lines now and this is going to be pretty straightforward because all we need to do is to use the formula so i'll just write this down so a minus c dot b cross t over the modulus of b cross t and we want the modulus of the whole lot that's going to give us the shortest distance so let's write down what these four vectors are. So A is going to be a point that the first line passes through, and you can see that's just I, so that's one, zero, zero. B is gonna be the direction vector of the uh, first line, so I can see that that's zero, one, one, because it's just J plus K. C is going to be a point that the second line passes through, and this is minus one, three minus one, because it's minus i, three j minus k. And d is going to be um, the direction of the second line, which is two minus one minus one, because it's two i minus j minus k. So substituting everything in, we are going to have a minus c. So 
write the whole thing out a minus c I'll work all of this out in a moment and then dot b cross t so that's going to be 0 1 1 cross 2 minus 1 minus 1 and that's all going to be over the modulus to size of b cross t Okay, let's work all of this out. So we're going to have to work out B cross T because we're going to need that for the top and the bottom. Working out the dot product's easy. So B cross T, um, which is 0, 1, 1, cross 2, minus 1, minus 1. That's going to be an I, J, K and then uh, 0, 1, 1, 2, minus 1, minus 1. So that's I, um, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus J, 0, 1, 2, minus 1, plus K, 0, 1, 2, minus 1. Right, so what do we get? So we'll have um, minus one, minus minus one, so minus one plus one. So that leaves us with zero i. Then here we'll have zero uh, minus two. So that's gonna be minus two. Then we've got the minus there. So it'll become minus minus two. So it'll become plus 2j and then with the last one this is going to be nothing minus 2 and then it'll just become minus 2k so now we can finish off the bit at the top so we'll start by working this out a minus c so a minus c so we'll have 1 minus negative 1 so you've got 1 minus minus 1 so that become 2 then here, this will become negative 3. And this one here, that will become um, 1. So that dot uh, with our cross product, which we've worked out, which is 0 to minus 2 over the length of that cross product which is going to be the square root of 0 squared plus 2 squared plus negative 2 squared. So what does that give us? So we're going to have 2 times 0 um, minus 6 or 0 minus 6 minus 2 which is minus 8. Then at the bottom we're going to have the square root of um, 0 plus 4 plus 4 so root 8 now I'll put my modular signs in that I forgot to put in from before because I'm reminded that we cannot have a negative distance so um, what I'll get if I work this out on the calculator um, basically 8 divided by root 8 which is root 8 or 2 root 2 so 2 root 2 is our shortest distance between these two skew lines okay you should now be able to do exercise 1e on pages 23 to 25 we'll just do um, uh, a quick recap so it's often useful uh, to remember that um, if we want to find the shortest distance between two skew lines 
um, that's going to be this a shortest distance between two skew lines is going to be this so a minus c it might be worth um, just writing down where these letters a b c d come from so this is where we have lines where one line is r equals a plus lambda b and the other line is r equals c plus mu d so that's where we're going to get our a b c d from and the other thing is about when we have planes which cross so if two planes intersect um, at a line the direction of the line or the direction of this line of this line is perpendicular to the normals of both of or not both of each plane of each plane.